Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Special High Representative, for a very uh, illuminating uh, discourse on mediation and the challenges we confront. I uh, am the Pakistan ambassador to Turkey, sitting in for my permanent representative from Riyadh. Uh, thank you to Turkey, OIC, and the United Nations for organizing this conference also. Uh, very rightly, uh, High Representative, you have uh, outlined and illuminated the difficulties that the 20, uh, 21st century has brought with it uh, in terms of resolving conflicts and dealing with protracted conflicts. As a representative of a country that finds itself party and next door to one of the most protracted uh, conflicts in the world, which unfortunately has been in the news for all the wrong reasons in the recent couple of months. Uh, I would like to share some views and then request, uh, then make some, uh, or put some questions to you, if you could uh, enlighten us on that. You are very right that the classical political conflicts between states, such as the Kashmir conflict, has now e morphed into a more populist, more angry, more religious overtone conflict also. We are witnessing the rise of populism everywhere, and we are witnessing that in, uh, in our neighborhood, to our east also, so much so that there are now unfortunate people uh, in that part of the world in which they have been lynched on the mere suspicion of having the wrong kind of meat in their pots. And you have mentioned about the fact that the discourse is becoming angry. Uh, there is perhaps uh, no country unfortunately where this discourse is angrier than in our neighborhood. So my question would be that with the chronicity of the conflict obvious to the world, the danger of the conflict also obvious to the world, the kind of states and the potentialities and the, the, they, they have on both sides of the border, how is it that we bring to bear mediation or mediation plus to deal with this problem. Why has mediation so far not worked? Uh, well, uh, since I am party to one, uh, I am a representative of one of the parties, our interpretation is that in this conflict, one party, Pakistan, is ready for mediation, the other is not. <coughs> what do we do in a situation like that? How do we bring a certain degree of automaticity to where a certain um, a conflict, when it defies the ability of the two parties to decide it amongst themselves so that the international system comes in, not just for the sake of the two parties, but given the potentialities that these two countries have for the sake of the region and the world. So where do we go if one party refuses mediation, other is agreed upon it, the dangers are obvious, the humanitarian and human rights dimensions are undeniable. So what can the OIC, what can the United Nations, and the broader international community do. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your presentation and, uh, and clarifying us also the very complex, I mean, at the same time, I mean, a very concerned situation in Kashmir and uh, the situation you are facing. Hmm? I think is an example what the three cycles of the conflict uh, should be taken into account, as you say. But unfortunately, the conflict appeared. Nobody was expecting the decision of uh, your neighbor. And then, well, uh, the population was uh, under this new regime, this new situation, in fact. And then the traditional mediation started to move, and your country, the national community tried to, but it didn't, as you say, produce results. So in a certain way, we are now again in the pre-conflict. You have to really start to work in order that the real mediation could start. So that, I think, uh, through um, civil society, population, uh, bottoms up, I think you could create the, the need for this. At the same time, the traditional diplomacy have to work, 
you have to mobilize as you have been doing as Pakistan in Security Council, in the UN, in the different fora. So we have to start to understand today that we have to work in a much more, let's say, multiply one. Maybe the traditional diplomacy is not going to succeed at this stage, but you have to continue. But at the same time, you have to accompany the, the traditional diplomacy with other moves that has not been used till now. And that is when I think of this cultural civil society population that they are anger, they are furious, they are not really accepted, you know, what is going on around the world today. Everybody's on the street. Why the people are going to the street? It's, I mean, they prefer to be at home. But their home is not protected. So there is a lack of trust in ourselves, in the institution, in our people. So you have to invest in this new way. Not with a guarantee that you are going to succeed, but to try to create the moment. And then, of course, if you succeed, then you have to maintain this uh, dialogue between communities and, and different uh, approach on religion and, and nationalism to in order to consolidate and to, to try to build up a living together. It's not going to be easy, you know better than me, uh, but um, I mean, you have to try, you have to continue, as I say to, to when I was professor in, in Sciences Po in Paris, you have to maintain the traditional way, but we cannot only rely in the traditional way. You have to be much more creative today in order that you can bring some solution to this uh, difficult challenge that we are confronting. Thank you, sir.